Good evening, Violent High School football fans, and welcome in to a county rivalry matchup tonight here from historic Gatone Stadium right here in Vineland, New Jersey. Kyle Bennett, Rich Scarpa on the call with you tonight as the Fighting Clan gets set to take on Bridgeton. Well, you got here right in time as the captains have already been out on the field, and we're going to get this started. These two teams, the last two times they played, last year was Vineland 28-0 over Bridgeton. But just a year before that, it was Bridgeton 20 to nothing over Vineland. So they split the last two. And as Vineland comes into this, they'll be having a new look on offense. Um, we heard about the uh, battle for positions that are all over. There's a new offensive lineman going to start a different quarterback tonight. And we'll get into that when we get the ball, which is going to happen now as the Bulldogs are set to kick to Vineland. Vineland in their all acetate gray uniforms tonight. White helmets. Personal favorite for both Rich and I. A booth perspective. Bridgeton in their all whites, maroon helmets. And it's Xavion Diaz and Josh Sifas back deep to return the kick. It's going to go to Diaz. And we are underway here from Gatone Stadium as Diaz makes a move up past the 30. And he gets taken down a little up past the 40-yard line. Great return there by Xavion Diaz, something we mentioned last week, where as soon as he took on this punt kick return role a couple of seasons ago, he's just taken it and all pun intended, run with it. We do have a flag back at the 25. So already my charting the possessions is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a hold on Vineland. So Vineland's going to come out tonight with Jacob Martinez at quarterback. Jacob, the junior, at 5'6", 155. I had the opportunity to talk to quarterback coach Vizo. And uh, it looks like they, they may want to go one half with him, put Gallo back in on the second half is the early plan. Gallo warmed up real nicely after the first quarter. You know, new OC, new quarterback, some new guys. But uh, – the thing with Martinez is great pocket awareness. He can feel pressure without seeing it, has enough arm, and it's a little more speed to try to get some of the running, not that bruising power that Gallo has. And Martinez is going to line up under center for his first varsity snap at quarterback. And we've got more dirty laundry on the field here. Tremaine Hanna up there for the Bulldogs. But they're going to say it was on the other side movement on the line. So Vineland had this started at the 42. The holding penalty brings it back, and now the false start. Came out that first time with that lead fullback, which is how they were able to drive the ball and pound the ball up the middle last week. Charles Clark, the deep back here for the Fighting Clan, as Martinez hands it off to Clark. Tries to make a move, but not much there as Bridgeton closes in on Charles Clark for a minimal gain. Second and 13 here for the Fighting Clan. A hand off to Clark who finds some space, stays on his feet. He's up past the 30. Knocked out of bounds as he switches hands there. Great run there by Charles Clark. So it looks like Pritchard, who we talked about last week, last year's quarterback, is now wearing number one. Yeah, we have some uh, rosters for Bridgeton, and being how I work over in Bridgeton, I a few guys on here. There's like four number sevens, five number nines. A few of them graduated a couple years ago. Go fish. 
First and 10 here from the 37 for the Fighting Clan as Martinez back under center, eye formation. Hands it off to Clark, stays on his feet. There's a flag once again and another one way deep. Kind of looks like the holding area. Oh, it's on the defense. Just saw the flag get tossed back to the official. Remember when the official tossed the flag into the uh, eye of the player <laughs> and hurt him, too? A big personal foul penalty there. Vineland quickly on the Bulldog side of the field. Recouping some of the penalty yards they lost deep in their own territory now. And we balanced out the penalty yards. Just like Thanos. <laughs> Ball spotted at the 43-yard line here for the Fighting Clan. It's going to be Cephas back there at running back for this play. As Martinez hands it off to Cephas, oh, who finds a hole, makes his way upfield. Cephas gets tangled up and taken down. But a great run there by Josh Cephas. Oh, outstanding play. It's, it's almost like a counter or a delay. Other offenses, a belly, but... The blocking up front, you could see the hole just open up. Great job up front by Vineland. And Cephas turns the defender around trying to track him down. Coach Guzman mentioned this week on Guzman's Gridiron with myself on the Underground Sports Philadelphia Podcast Network that he sees Cephas as like the perfect complement to what Charles Clark does. They balance each other out. They do different things, but... They're going to be a, a thunder and lightning is the term that he used for this backfield for the Fighting Clan as Martinez hands it back off to Cephas. Cephas looking to get into the end zone. He runs into his own man and is taken down. Well, his vision, and we're at a perfect angle, his vision is outstanding as, you know, sometimes the ball's supposed to go one place, and if you get beat, you just got to wash the guy down and Cephas a little jump cut. He was really looking strong today. So, so far on this drive, everything on the ground. Jacob Martinez has yet to throw. And I don't think we'll be seeing it here at first and goal from the five. As Ryan Carter is there to batter his his way, Charles lead the runner. Clark gets the ball, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown for Mr. Thunder, Charles Clark. And that's going to give the fighting clan a 6-0 lead, their first lead of this 2023 season. Well, Vinan goes up the field pretty quick, but it was also, yeah, also some really nice running. I talked a little bit from Coach Vizo about Martinez's vision and, and understanding of what's going on, but the backs were just fantastic on Greif that. Greif puts the extra point through the uprights, as he always does. And with 10-16 to go, Vineland has a 7-0 lead here over Bridgeton at Catone Stadium. Back to those runs, though, Rich. I mean, that was the, the perfect compliment there, as Coach Guzman brought up on the podcast this week. You know, he wants to use those two as complementary pieces to one another, and you see the vision there, like you mentioned, of Josh Cephas, who can, you know, kind of bounce between the tackles, use his his center of gravity. He's only listed at five foot five to his advantage, and you know, make his way between the tackles, and then his speed speaks for itself. And there's another thing to that too. Our offensive line is very large, and you can't find him. You know, you, you don't see him. Uh, if it's a defender, you're engaged trying to read pressure and slide somewhere, but you can't see where the ball's going. You know, and that being slight, it worked for a lot of people's roles. We were talking about, uh, I, was, I was at my fantasy draft, we were comparing people, and Sproul's name came up. The same thing, it's really hard to find them behind that massive line. Herring, 6'4", 276. Gilbert, 6'2", 305. Chestnut, 5'11", 285. Blandig, 6'6", 300. And Phoebus in there at 5'11", 180. It was him and Sode sharing some time. I think Sode will see more on the defensive side today. It's a booming kickoff. 
It will be returned deep inside Bulldog territory. Return man tripped up at about the 20-yard line, and that's where Bridgeton will set up shop. Well, Rayon Carter makes a really nice open field tackle, keeping Bridgeton back in their own end to get this started. So we'll get Cliff Smith's defense out here for the first time in this one, who last week very impressive across the board. Even in a loss, the defense showed up, made some plays. We had the Mutcherson interception with a big-time sack from Ryan Carter. So we'll see this defense continue to progress and continue to make big plays as they get set to face this Bridgeton offense for the first time. Ball snapped. Handoff a bit bobbled, and defense is there to pile up, and it's almost the whole team, as Jason Kelsey once said, to take down the running back. Well, I believe it's Dante Hallett, quarterback. Of course, we're operating with a less than stellar roster, but Hall is number 11. Bridgeton had a week zero game against Lower Cape May. Got to see a little bit of that on film. It was weird, though. When you watch the game film, it's a play. Then the next play, they just ran the camera. So you have to hit fast forward. It, oh, it was a nightmare watching. Second and ten here for the Bulldogs. Hand it off. Looked like Harper on that one. Their version of that thunder and lightning back there, Harper. Smaller in stature. So two plays for minus one, third and 11. They're going to spread it out here with three receivers to the bottom. Shotgun formation. Mason Afanador all over that one. There's some good tackling from the kickoff to that play. Nice open field on them quick. So Bridgeton's drive is going to net them a minus. About 15. So the punter will be a little shorter than normal on this with the ball up to six. Shotgun snaps were a little high, but they have a long snapper in. Good snap. Great job by the special teams there. Get it. What are you waiting for? And keeping his feet in bounds. Looked like that was Noah Cruz. Didn't know if that was just a straight up punt up in the air or if it was blocked. And Marcelino Ojeda, one of our colleagues, down there as the special teams coach is fired up as the special teams comes through, gets a safety. And finally now with a 9-0 lead here with 8.57 to go in the first quarter. And they'll obviously get the ball back as well here on the safety punt. S, 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 S. We talked coming into this how Bridgeton's the kind of team, if they get up, they can get rolling. And just exactly what Vineland needed, a long drive, a three and out that goes to a block punt for a safety and getting the ball back again. And those are the moments that, you know, early in a season, new coach, 
new coaching staff members. That builds confidence between player and coach, builds that rapport for your unit, and that's going to carry over, hopefully, you know, throughout the rest of this game and moving forward as well. Yeah, I kind of thought punter should have been back a little further. It's usually 14 yards. I would have expected them to be a couple feet from the, or a couple yards from the back line. So on the free kick, Brixton's going to elect to kick off and instead of punt, and that probably worked well because first kickoff drove Vineland back to the five. Short kick. The Cephas on the return makes his way past midfield, up past the 40. And the Fighting Clan are going to have phenomenal field position once again as they get set to take over on offense with 8.51 remaining in the opening quarter, leading 9-0 following the safety. Got a little lucky there. There's a block in the back that the officials missed on that one. Would have put us back on our own side, but great field position, and that defense for Britson is going to be out there after a long drive and a quick three and out. Bridgeton's numbers aren't that large, about 35 players on the team. A lot of guys going both ways, and a lot of them are big guys too. So we'll see Martinez out there, quarterback. He's going to hand it off to Charles Clark, who finds a lane, makes his way up field past the 20, 15, 10, 5, into the end zone. Boom, Charles Clark, his second touchdown of the game. Mr. Thunder does it again. Not to be denied, breaking a few tackles, and again, turning a, a, a defender around with a nifty cut. Just running backs, coach, you, you got your guys running great. Good job, of course, as always up on the line, but just so much after contact for Clark on that. I'm sure Davon Seymour and Reggie Teamer are thrilled about that run there. They are their own. Thunder and Lightning for this running backs unit this season under Coach Guzman. Ball snap, kick is up, and Greif puts the points on the board. That's a long hike to get that one back as he boomed it over the net. So with 8.09 remaining, Fighting Clan with a 16-0 lead here over Bridgeton. So far in this one, Rich, they've been impressive on the ground. Charles Clark and Josh Cephas been able to find their lanes, use their vision to their advantage, and that's been a, a huge determining factor so far in this one in terms of points is the running backs have been able to find their spots. Yeah, and, and they're always getting up the field, getting up the field. Yeah, and you see the development of these running backs – We'll have our graphics up. We just got a, today we got our list of sponsors. We're very thankful for them helping us be able to broadcast these games. Heck, and the first one on the list is where your show's at. Well, basically, very similar to Greenview Inn yep. at Eastland, which is like uh, cousins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The big brother. Yeah. So Greif getting set to kick this one away. He booms it down the field. It will be returned by the up return man there. Taken down almost immediately at the 25 yard line by Mark Mutcherson. Well, one Mutcherson, of the captains. he has outside containment, sees the blocker, decides to engage, keep his outside open, and then just pushes the blocker into the running back. Outstanding play. And those responsibilities on punt, and kick off for your contained guy. Not supposed to be tackling much. Keep it inside of you. Press it back in. Nothing outside. And not only does he do it perfectly, he comes up with the tackle with an assist from the defender he pushed into him. So we'll get the defense back out there for the Fighting Clan with 8.03 here in the first quarter remaining. Vineland with a 16-0 lead. Ball spotted at the 25-yard line. 
High snap, handed off. Taken down for a minimal gain there. Yeah, Patrick Gilbert there on the defensive line. That's what I like to see when people are repping through. You know, you, you could be the starting this or the starting that, but to be able to work through so anyone's injured, somebody needs a break, so you can keep everybody sharp. Man in motion here. High snap once again, corralled by the quarterback and taken down. Big time sack there by Noah Cruz. His first sack of the season. Yeah, Hal almost able to get away from him with one arm. Cruz able to just pull him back into his lap for another loss for the Bulldogs. They're back to their own 20. Violence sending pressure on this one. This one's going to be handed off. Gobbled up by. Pritchett lowers his head and picks up a handful on that, but they need it a lot more as it's going to be fourth and 12 in time to punt again as Pritchett drops back to kick it for the Bulldogs. Another great job by the Fighting Clan defense there to limit the time of possession for this Bridgeton offense and get the ball back for the Fighting Clan offense. As Xavier Diaz will watch this one bounce a little past midfield. Five fifty-five remaining here in the opening quarter. Fighting Clan offense will take the field once again, looking to put some more points on the board as they have a 16-0 lead. Ball's going to be spotted at the 49-yard line. Whistles, timeout Bridgeton. So while we have this timeout, we also like to thank our sponsors. I mentioned the Greenview Inn at Eastland Golf Course, Reconstructive Orthopedics, Newfield National Bank, Van Dodge, Allen Associates, Technic Consulting, Medio Law Firm, Barufi Brothers, GNS Dry Cleaning, Vineland Education Association, Dr. Michael Gorson, General and Cosmetic Dentistry, the Claridge, or Radisson Hotel, Gorgo Group, Larry's 2 Restaurant and Catering, Patino ShopRite, Carluzzo and Teresi Petroleum Transporters, Homestead Plumbing, Richland Carpet, Manny and Vic's Pizzeria, Sir Speedy, and The Sweet Tooth. Nice to see all the sponsors coming back with a few new ones in there. As Coach Russo and has his got all this going and they're right in behind VHS football now that he's moved on and it's coach Guzman so first and ten from the 49 hard count we'll see it's like Gallo got a little bit of a head start there he's playing tight end in this first half here Talk about a guy that can play some football. You're the center. Get a little banged up, and they're like, hey, this guy can play center. Let's put you at tight end. Let's put you at linebacker. Let's make you the quarterback. Just an outstanding football player. And I don't know the need's going to be there to be throwing the ball, but he adds a weapon. That last year it was game one. Burt gets hurt, you know, the, the tight end that we were looking forward to. And the tight end's a spot finally can utilize. See 
Memphis bounces off his own players and picks up maybe a couple yards there. Second and 13 here for the Fighting Clan. This one handed off to Cephas. Find some space. A great run once again by Josh Cephas. Well, he set up a makeable third here. Third and about three. Well, our, our second quarterback in our second game, and really nothing's missed a beat with the running game, getting the ball where it's got to get. Everybody knows what they're doing. Third and two from the 41-yard line, just under four and a half minutes to go here in this opening frame. Charles Clark looking to bully this one forward. Teammates say he's got it, and he certainly does. First down, Fighting Clan. Put the battering ram back in there. Lead blocker, fullback Ryan Carter. He does the dirty work. Just follow him for two. Nice cool night tonight. Doesn't look like it's going to be that way next week. <laughs> <laughs> Three receivers set here. Over the head of Martinez. Oh, nice job. Taken down. We do have a flag a on the play. Side backer Pritchett comes up to stop that after he was able to break a couple tackles, but a flag comes onto the field. saying he led with his helmet. Wasn't that long ago that was a good play. It's a tough tackle to make. The quarterback's 5'6", and his knees are bent. He's probably about five feet off the ground, and you got to lower to get in there. But if the helmet hits first, then you got a problem. Still a tough play to make. So Bridgeton looked like they may be able to make a stop off that miscue on the snap, but instead it's automatic first down. Vineland now at the Bridgeton 23. One handed off. Nothing there that time. So button in on another tackle. Light breeze at the back of Vineland. Saying that because when you get to this spot, I'm doing the math already for field goals on second down. And Vineland's going to pick up a free five all sides on the defense.
And Vineland's going to give it back. Back where we started. Here we go round again, Kyle. It's like the, uh, the gif of Grandpa Simpson walking in the door and walking right <laughs> back out. <laughs> Finally going to take a timeout here with two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Score still 16-0 in favor of the Fighting Clan. Finally getting a little sloppy, not a bad time for a timeout. Clearview next week, right, Kyle? Yes, sir. On the turf. We've had some good success with Clearview. I can remember back in the day, it was the first time playing them in a while, and we had got off to like a 3-0 and start, and everybody's like, well, that'll end, you know, and something like 56 to 28 or something. We were just all over them from the jump. Had a good one last year, too, at Clearview. Martinez takes the snap, hands it off to Charles Clark. Pushes forward for a minimal gain there. Third and a long five. This may be the first opportunity for Martinez to throw one out in the flats to Powell, Schwed, Cetus. And looks like a Fanador's out there on the right. Savion Diaz to the bottom of your screen. So Martinez takes the snap, hands it off to Cephas, who tries to barrel through, but gets brick walled a bit there by the Bridgeton defense. Let's see where it the spot comes in. Yep. In fact, they're going to go field five. goal here. Not a bad spot here to give Greif an opportunity to, to kick one for you. Looks like it'll be a 35-yarder. Spotted kick is up, and it is good. So with a running clock going, now stopped at 26.3 seconds. Colin Greif with his second field goal of the season. Gives the Fighting Clan a 19-0 lead here in the first quarter over Bridgeton. time the offense wasn't as easy to get up the field on them. Much better tackling from Bridgeton, not over pursuing things. A couple back and forth penalties there to kind of stall momentum, but nonetheless, you still walk away with points. You let Greif get his leg used a bit. And you know what else? It's Every snap has been good. The blocking has been good. And this goes back to last week mm -hmm. on these extra point field goal attempts. Well, we didn't do an extra point last week. We went for two, but on the field goal attempts. Sometimes half the battle snapping it, holding it, before you even think of the kicker. Greif sends this one deep. It will be returned. That's a touchback. 
Yeah, high school, once they get their feet in there, I'm surprised he took that last step back because he was right on the goal line. But mentioned last week what a weapon that is. Yeah, we did the whole thing about where we used to start with the other teams on the 40. So Greif with his second touchback, the second field goal. And unlike the pros, you start at the 20, not the 25. So a long way to go for the Bulldogs. Vineland looking for another three and out. Ball's handed off to Brian Pritchett, taken down by the Vineland defense, a whole collective there. So just Bridgeton's third time with the football. Looking for the first first down. And that's going to do it for the first quarter here from Gatone Stadium. A great opening quarter by the Fighting Clan. Two touchdowns for Charles Clark and a field goal. And a safety. And a safety. Just checking safety. off. safety. Yeah, we, we can get back into that score Gami there with that. Safeties are always important. Checking off your bingo cards there for ways to score <laughs> in a football game here from Gatone Stadium. Fighting Clan leading 19 to 0. Impressive first quarter, though, to say the least, in all three phases. Yeah, on offense, it's everything on the ground and just moving the football. Defensively, yet to allow first down. Special teams, great outstanding open field tackles on the two kickoffs that and then a touchback special teams gets a block punt for a safety and if you want to hear what coach Guzman has to say about this game get set for clear view as well you can join myself and coach Guzman at the double eagle Tomorrow night, that is Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be at the Double Eagle for Guzman's Gridiron with potential special guest in the building as well. Not going to spill the beans there. You have to come out and see who's going to be in attendance, but come on out to the Double Eagle and take in the recording of Guzman's Gridiron, the official Vineland High School football coaches show presented by Underground Sports Philadelphia and the Red and Gray Gridiron Group. High snap again here for the Bulldogs. Harper. Picks up a couple. It's going to be third and three. Britain's most manageable third down today. Button and Zion Shields up on the line for Bridgeton. Getting a little bit of a push here. Third and four here for the Bulldogs. This one handed off to Pritchett. Great tackle down low. Take the feet right out from underneath him. You're going to send this one away. Almost blocked again. Diaz going to let this one roll. It takes a favorable bulldog roll. Inside the 35. Going to be spotted about the 34. With 10-21 remaining here in the second quarter. Good pressure by Vineland's punt return team. Has Pritchett just hit a line drive. Getting it out of there. It's 
Ball spotted at the 29, 10-21 remaining until halftime. Martinez hands this one off. First time that Bridgeton defense is really swallowed up at the line of scrimmage there. No gain on the play. It has gotten tougher to move the ball. Kanai Walker up there for the Bulldogs, a junior 5'9", 280. He's kind of clogging everything up in the middle. And Bunton we've been calling all game. So they have some size up front. See if Vinyl's going to pound or look for a little misdirection. Charles Clark takes this one around the outside up to near the 50-yard line. Another great run there by Charles Clark. Well, he accelerates quick. Just when they clog the middle, you slide off tackle. Nice play calling by Coach Hendricks. First and 10 from the 49 here for the Fighting Clan. Looking to add more points on the board. As Martinez hands this one off. Charles Clark finds a lane. Skips past another defender. Stiff arms another up past the 30. Down past the 20, the 15, the 10, five. Touchdown, Charles Clark. His third of the game. And Mr. Thunder is turning into the god of thunder in this one. His third score of this contest. And we've talked about vision all game so far from both of these running backs, but Charles Clark is a man on the mission when the rock is in his hands. And he gives Vineland a 25-0 lead. Boy, he knows how to set up his blocks, how to use them. Vineland blocking the whole way down the field. Gary Harper has a couple of attempts at it, and out of the blue, he gets taken off. A great effort by Harper to try to make the stop. But Vineland had four or five blockers looking for people, not just running down the field with them. Bridgeton lined up offsides. Vinyl will probably just decline and kick it from there. Oh. Looks like they're gonna. Yeah, they're going for Go two for here. Go for two here and make it a 27-0 lead pending. Could, could be a good time to uh, let Martinez throw his first mm -hmm. one, but Vineland's tight. Cephas, the deep back. And Carter will be leading the way. And to Cephas, who fumbles his way through. Linebacker the there. Pritchett comes right up through there, and Carter with a perfect angle. Makes the block. Cephas picks up the two-point conversion there for the Fighting Clan. So with 8.54 remaining here in the second quarter, the Fighting Clan now with a 27-0 lead over Bridgeton. You know, Coach Guzman calling Charles Clark and Cephas Thunder and Lightning. I'm ready to call Charles Clark Thor tonight because... He's wielding Mjolnir better than we've seen him in his entire varsity career. This is the best we've seen of Charles Clark, and that's a great sign of just progression year over year and the way that he's stepped into now a leadership role as an upperclassman and just taken his game to another level. He looks like a completely different running back than what we've seen the last two years. You know, it's been a while since Isaiah Pacheco was here, but talking to coaches when he was here, they used to say, don't go tackle him. Circle them and close the circle because, you know, Bridgeton right there with Clark coming at him full speed. Miss, miss, juke, miss. 
you know, you got to contain before you can tackle sometimes. And Clark just looks fantastic in space. And the return is muffed there, but recovered by Bridgeton. So with 8.45 to go here in the second quarter. We'll see what Coach Smith and the defense can cook up and see if they can get on the bingo board with a defensive touchdown. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Well, Bridgeton's first three drives started at their own 20. This is their best field position. What a difference a week makes between that lopsided field. We were tilted heavy in that first quarter last week. Well, it looks like they're going to throw this one with Empty nobody back. in the backfield. Looking to pass. It's intercepted. Great job there to just read the, the quarterback's eyes, and that's Prince Porte. Prince played some running back last year for the Fighting Clan. Playing some defensive back this year as well. And he picks up his first interception of the season. And the second interception for this Fighting Clan defense as a unit on the year. I believe that's the first pass attempt for Bridgeton and Vineland ready for it. Linebackers in great position. Martina is looking to pass, fires, completes it to Israel Schwed. He's taken out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. Slime time Schwed with those neon cleats. I like this slime. Nicely done. They got a late hit on Pritchett. A Schwed must have stepped out before Pritchett came in to finish the play. So ball spotted at the 16. First and 10. First time we've seen Martinez throw the ball there. He takes the snap. He's going to hand this one off to Cephas, who finds a lane, barrels through, and is taken down just shy of the goal line. Cephas remains the deep back here. Let's see if he can finish the job. Martinez hands this one off to Cephas, who goes in nearly untouched. And Josh Cephas with his first touchdown of the game, and I believe of the season, gives Vineland a 33-0 lead pending extra point slash two-point conversion attempt. Cephas grabs his first score of the game to join Charles Clark, who has three scores, a field goal by Colin Greif, and a safety by the punt team. Greif going to kick the extra point here. Ball spotted, bobbled. Greif going to have to pick this one up. And he's taken down, so the extra point is no good. Botch snap there. That was my fault. <laughs> I just did the whole thing about that. It's my fault. So with 7.45 remaining until halftime, it is 33-0 fighting clan. And Bridgeton, two, three, four possessions. Three three and outs and one first play interception. Only ten plays 
not counting penalties. I was reading some stuff on Bridgeton and uh, head coach Lane. You know, I mentioned that they're group five school in population, but not in athletic involvement. Myself working out at Bridgeton for the past 14 or so years, you know, that's the case. The hardest part is getting people out, and that's not just for football. It's for any of the sports to get the involvement and get the numbers up. Some of the sports are coming along that way, but the game of football, you need a lot, a lot of guys. So you get basketball where we're decent at there. Cripe sends this one deep. It'll be returned up past the 30 to the 35 and out of bounds at around the 40-yard line. Jeremiah Russell or Dante Howell. Who knows? One of the 14s on our roster. Uh, at least I was able to cross off about 15 people <laughs> that are turning 20 today. Soon enough, we'll be able to roll those birthday credits <laughs> like they do at Citizens Bank Park. I remember when I was a little, saying, oh, my God, it's everybody's birthday. <laughs> that you think, you know, 35,000 people, 365. Yeah, come on. I love Let's when go. they're on there and the age is just a bunch of question marks. <laughs> that one always gets me. So Bridgeton sets up shop at the 39-yard line with 7.34 to go here until halftime. They hand this one off, and good read there by the Fighting Clan defense. It's Prince Borte. Number 53 for the Fighting Clan, who is one of the few that we don't have on our roster. It was a uniform thing, a couple of uniforms, or i seen them changing some, but I didn't get updates. Whenever you see the different uniform on, uh-oh, what happened to <laughs> – all right, where it is? And coaches, coaches have so much to do before the game, we're kind of falling to that afterthought. But I'll tell you, the, the acetate gray uniforms are some of the best – Fighting Clint have ever donned. High snap, looking to pass. And just over the head of Tank Powell. He's looking to have the second interception for this defense tonight. Third and 12 upcoming for Bridgeton. Ball snapped, handed off to Pritchett. Barrels his way through. Great job staying on his feet. About four tacklers, and they're all going low on him. And watching him fall pretty quickly with those low tackles, but they are able to break three or four. But the defense is still waiting. There's two more guys to get outside of. Great pursuit. With great job sliding towards the football, stepping up. Looks like Britchen's going to go for it, fourth and about 11. Well, now somebody else in to punt. Get away, get away, get away. That's live. Recovered by Britchen. Bounced off one of the Bulldogs players on that. 
straight like, up and down. Sometimes I think, you know, if all I have to do is touch a Vineland player and Bridgen gets a new set of downs, so I always wonder, like, when you're really up against it, why not just line drive, kick the ball at a linebacker? You know, especially if you do that Australian run inside thing and just try to light him up in the chest and play the rebound. So with five and a half minutes to go until halftime, Fighting Clan offense going to set up shop once again and look to add more points on the board. Ball spotted at the 36-yard line. Cephas, the running back. Martinez takes a snap, hands it off to Cephas, who gets lit up. By number 55. Now three to choose from. So that was either Bowman, Jimenez, Thomas, or somebody else. But a great play defensively. Or all three of them just went Voltron. <laughs> and what do we do when we get together? <laughs> well, Finland's able to hit a field goal or a touchdown here. That'll get us to the running clock part of the game. Second and 13, Martinez takes the snap. He rolls out, looking to pass. He fires, completes it to Gallo. Gallo, stiff arm there. Signals the first down. Very Zach Ertz-esque. Great job there by Martinez, finding his fellow quarterback playing tight end tonight. Like we talked about feeling pressure. That one, that pressure from Pritchett, he saw right in his face, but able to just drift back a little bit and get rid of it before taking the hit. First and ten here for the fighting clan. Martinez. Thought he had someone to hand it off to. He's gonna have to. S swallow that one. Tremaine Hanna in on that tackle. Well, not too bad getting through six possessions before you turn the wrong way or the back went the wrong way, one thing or the other, before the first miscommunication. full miscommunication, you know. When I was up to seventh grade, I was a quarterback, and you turn the wrong way and just like, oh, my God, I'm going to get yelled at. I was only 12. <laughs> Martinez hands this one off to Cephas, who is Oof. met by none other than Brian Pritchett. I think the word just enveloped him. Is that the right <laughs> one? Or you just swallowed him up? That's a welcome to the league yeah. <laughs> type of hit. Third and nine now. Yeah, keep your arms out wide and don't go charging in and give Cephas a chance to juke you. So Vineland scored on every possession, hitting a third and long here with just over two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Martinez. Takes the snap, hands it off to Cephas, who finds a lane once oh, again. What a Great cut. run. And Cephas stays on his feet and pushes forward inside the 10 down at about the five yard line. Shoo. You know, thunder and lightning and all that, but they both have beautiful jump cuts, setting up people. Ball's going to be spotted at the eight-yard line. With now just under two minutes to go here until halftime. First and goal from the eight. So 
This one's handed off. And taking down is number 30, Nasir Lewis, his first carry of the season. Junior listed at five foot, 875 pounds. Nasir Lewis, the the rain to the thunder and lightning. <laughs> we'll have to check in with head coach, podcaster, meteorologist extraordinaire Jose Guzman about that one. As Nasir Lewis carries it once again. I think I give to the first guy, Carter. That's a nice way of saying thank you for all that blocking you've been doing. Third and goal from the three. Ryan Carter, the... Up back there. And finally going to call a timeout with 23.1 seconds to go. We'll see what the decision is here. Well, you know, if you did ask Coach Guzman that, you know what he'd say. <laughs> His laugh becomes infectious. So Vineland yet to punt, not going to be punting, but maybe have time for a, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'd just kick it. It'd be a good challenge for Greif with the wind a little in his face. That'll put you up 35, run the clock, get another snap attempt. Because they've been really good this year. He just had a bad one. But also a good way to challenge your team. It's two yards to go. And Fourth and goal from the two. Offense going to stay out on the field. Now Sear Lewis, the deep back. Ryan Carter, the up back here in I formation. Martinez. Somebody jumped. Oh, going to call it on Bridgeton. Bridgeton comes across. Uh, so you're going to just pound this in the middle, or you're going to go a little bit off tackle with that back, like Carter lead up into the middle of nothing and get to that edge? I think you just pound it in the middle. It's going to be Nasir Lewis, his first touchdown of the season. Gets into the end zone practically untouched. And he extends the Fighting Clan lead to 39-0. His first drive of the season results in his first points of the season. So congrats to Nasir Lewis on his first touchdown this year. Greif going to try to make this a 40-burger. Snap is spotted. It's up, and it is over that wall, and it is good. So with 18.1 seconds to go here until halftime, the Fighting Clan with a dominant 40-0 to zero lead here at home over Bridgeton. Certainly outstanding on both sides of the ball. Violent scores on every drive. Three and out, every possession for Bridgeton except for the interception. Now that was a one and out. Defense even picking up a safety. Just been dominant in all three phases tonight collectively and, and playing as a team. And 
Coach Guzman and this entire staff have to be thrilled with how this first half has just unfolded for them. They've been able to produce. I think the way they expected this offense to produce last week, and learning from some of the mistakes, preventing the turnovers, preventing the penalties that kind of crushed them early. This is a nice bounce back so far, and we're only halfway through. Greif sends this one. It's going to take a bounce, and it'll be returned up past the 30 to the 35, and out of bounds just shy of the 40. 10.5 seconds to go. Mutcherson trips him up. It's nice to see guys that are starting on both sides of the ball or one side or the other and also being involved in special teams. You know, sometimes it's easy to take a, a, a blow during those plays, but as we both agree, special teams are just so important. It's an easy way, if you're good at that, to pick up an advantage, almost like getting a tight end mm -hmm. at the turn in a fantasy draft. You know, you lock down that position, you have a, an edge at that position, and then you got to find your way. Travis Kelsey, pick number six. I Very have, nice. I have I've it. got yeah. Dallas Goddard myself. Nice. Bridgeton takes the snap here. Fake the handoff, going to run it with the quarterback, but stopped in his tracks by Mason Afanador. And that's going to do it here for the first half at Catone Stadium. Lots of scoring for the Fighting Clan and a great job by the defense to keep Bridgeton off the board. We go into halftime with the Fighting Clan leading 40 to 0. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back for second half action here from Gatone Stadium in a county rivalry matchup. Kyle Bennett, Rich Scarpa right here on the Vineland Public Schools YouTube channel.
And welcome back, everybody, to Gatone Stadium here in Vineland, New Jersey, as we get set for second half action between the fighting clan of Vineland and the Bulldogs of Bridgeton. Kyle Bennett, Rich Scarpa here on the call with you. Rich, a phenomenal first half by the fighting clan in all three phases, led by three touchdowns from Charles Clark. Yeah, just everything Vineland was doing. I mean, the most adversity was a loss of one on a play. I they were just able to execute in every aspect. Didn't need to throw them all much, but when they had a couple opportunities, it looked all right too. So I, defensively, no first downs for Bridgeton. Probably right about break even, zero yards. Like it, it's been dominant. Jacob Martinez, the quarterback tonight, has really commanded the huddle well, has been poised, hasn't had to pass too much, but in his two pass attempts, he's been perfect. And the defense getting some turnovers, special teams cashing in. A safety scored in this one, Colin Greif, now two for two on the season in field goal attempts. And it was no chip shot. What are we at, 35 yards? 35 right? yards. And that has resulted in Vineland with having a commanding 40 to zero lead. As Colin Greif will get set to kick this one away to Bridgeton. So with that 35 point plus lead, anytime the lead is 35 or more, the clock will just run after we kick it. It won't stop. And Greif sends this one deep. And if you're just joining us here, This one will be returned up to about the 30-yard line. If you're just joining us, be sure to subscribe to the Vineland Public Schools YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at VLDSchoolsTV. That way you don't miss a single broadcast of any sporting event, events throughout the school district, and everything in between here during the 2023-2024 school year, which is yet to get underway still, but we'll have two games under our belt before the school year starts. But... Be sure to subscribe. Click that bell icon so you get notified on your device of choice anytime we go live. You can hear the smooth, sultry voices of myself and Rich Scarpa all football season long. That's youtube.com slash at VLDSchoolsTV. Nas Lewis, who scored the last touchdown, absorbs a block. I made a nice tackle. Just want to make sure I shouted that out. Great job on special teams. High snap. Hand it off. Might be the first first down. Gary Harper on the carry. That's the first time Britson's been able to get outside with any success. And just looking down at the sidelines, looks like Charles Clark's night is over. He's Got his pads off, still in his jersey, but has the hoodie on. Great game nonetheless by him. This one's handed off to Harper once again, but Vineland's defense is there. It's Noah Cruz and Ryan Maven in to make the stop. Yeah, and we talk about the uh, carries for Clark as an underclassman, and Cruz, everybody else that played when they're young. This is getting to the situation where you take your shoulder pads off, like you said, you know, hang out on the sidelines and let other people get the experience. Uh, if you have not played, to be out on this field is one thing, and to be into the game and get those jitters out, get those nerves settled, get your excitement calmed down, and make it like a regular thing. So there will be a lot of playing time for a lot of guys in this second half. Roll out by the quarterback, thrown and incomplete. Intended for number 24, either Cameron Van. I'm going with, with Bonner. Fourth and 15. Jesus. 
It's actually third down here. This one's handed off. Now it'll be fourth down. There you got it. Gorte in on the stop on that along with Bailey. Or excuse me, Lewis. Look at that. We got one of them going on. Savion Diaz back deep to return this one. And he will let that one bounce, and it took a favorable Vineland bounce that time. It went a little bit forward, so Fighting Clan will set up shop here. On offense for the first time in the second half. Looks like Vineland's going to stick with Jacob Martinez. Something says pass. Martinez hands this one off to Cephas. And Pritchett with a big hit. Ball comes out, but... Vineland back on top of it. I was thinking pass because he double-checked his play, you know, and we've been doing the, doing a little dive mm -hmm. up the middle quite a while. I'm like, oh, this is something a little different, maybe belly or pass. Let's bring up second and nine from the 34. One's handed off to Nasir Lewis. Just like that, we're under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Starting to see the personnel groupings as Mutcherson checks back in, like, and the uh, hammer comes back out in the running game. And I like the little short pistol shotgun. Martinez going to run it himself. Fumbles the football, and it's recovered by Bridgeton. Costly error there for Martinez. A nice return off the fumble. Looked like Harper with that. So, of course, best field position for Bridgeton so far at the Vineland 29. See what Coach Smith has up his sleeve for this defense here. As they try to preserve a stellar outing. This one thrown backwards to Pritchett. Finally taken down. Mutcherson saying the ball was out. But Pritchett lost it with that extra effort, and he did. And it's Saquon Anderson that comes up with the football for the Fighting Clan. So another turnover for Coach Smith's defense this season. Back-to-back -back plays. That's three turnovers forced by the Vineland defense on the year. Second of this game.
Martinez hands this one off. To Cephas. We are under three minutes to go here in this third quarter. Second and ten here for the Fighting Clan. This one's pitched back to Cephas. He's taken down. Ten for Bridgeton, not blocked on that play. Well, it gets us to a third and long, third and 11. Maybe get to take a look at Martinez throwing again. See if Tank Palk is the primary target here. Try to get him a little involved. Forty to zero, your score in favor of the Fighting Clan. Martinez looking to pass. He's being pressured. He's going to have to roll out. Trying to find a man. Nobody's open, and he's forced out of bounds. So the first punt of the game for the fighting clan. Sends this one deep. Takes a good bounce. Let it roll. We got a flag. A little breakdown and discipline by Bridgeton. A little, not like a bad clip, but a little hit in the back from behind. Way away from the ball. Your early penalties for Bridgeton certainly didn't help their cause. They had Vineland stopped once in the second quarter after a sack, but then it was a leading with the header spearing penalty. Gave Vineland automatic first. So just 23 seconds here in the third. Let's hand it off. Nice gain there for the Bulldogs. Should be the final play of this third quarter, and it will be. So we head to the final frame with the Fighting Clan leading 40 to zero. Here at Catone Stadium. Just what Vineland needed, a dominant first half, and now it's just 
hold on to it, get through it, keep everybody healthy, and get ready for Clearview. Shaping up to be Coach Guzman's first win. He'll go one and one as a head coach, as will this edition, the 2023 Violent Fighting Clan. And if you want to hear what Coach Guzman has to say about tonight's game and to get set for the matchup against Clearview next week here at home, come on out to the Double Eagle to watch Guzman's Gridiron, the official Vineland High School football coaches show presented by Underground Sports Philadelphia and the Red and Gray Gridiron Group at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, hosted by myself and Coach Guzman. And it is available in podcast form wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia every Wednesday night. So be sure to subscribe there so you don't miss out. If you can't make it out to the Double Eagle every week, you can always tune in every Wednesday to Guzman's Gridiron, the official coaches show for Vineland High School football. Harper on the carry there. A little confusion in the backfield for the Bulldogs there. You know, and another thing is, you watch them all, when we're on offense, how – the ball's right there at the bread basket. You know, the quarterback a lot of times is jumping up and it's throwing off the timing of these running backs. A lot of times they're getting the ball flat-footed. Another outstanding night for our marching clan, directed by Justin Feliciano. Tackle for no gain. Got to figure that's been Donnie St. Jean, number 52, wearing 53 today because that's his position. He's done a nice job up in there. I was talking to Coach Gilbert during the preseason. He said, Donnie's one of the smartest kids you'll ever be around. He's got like a 4.6 GPA. Yeah, I wasn't in that conversation. <laughs> I'd, I'd get tough, hard work, and a little <laughs> bit of a nudge. Heck, it wasn't until my junior year I realized they kept track of it and they ranked everybody by, like, I maybe would have cared a little bit not to be where I was because I just thought you just needed to pass. I'd plan it out perfectly. Just 10 to go here. Third down for the Bulldogs. Looking for another first down. Keeper. Hmm. I wonder why he got down so quick. Prince Borte. That's why. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Look like they're going to try to run an option. Ran out of options. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of <laughs> I kinda think you. Put the quarterback under center and let Pritchett get ahead of speed. That one looked like it was blocked. And the Fighting Clan are going to set up shop at about the 35-yard line. Great job tonight by that offensive line. Talked about how dynamic the running backs were with the ball, especially with space. There's was, was just some highlight reel runs tonight. P. 
Beautiful play. Great run there by Nas. Takes it up past midfield, Nasir Lewis. Boy, that, that we did that earlier in the first half, just designed really nice. The second time they opened that hole up enormous on that right side. Blandig and Gilbert over there, just been outstanding. Martinez hands this off to Nas once again. Takes it up to around the 25-yard line, does Nasir Lewis. He is itching for his second touchdown of this game. Well, I'm 54. I'm still waiting for my first. <laughs> Under seven minutes now to go here in regulation at Catone Stadium. Fighting Clan with that dominant 40 to zero lead. Martinez rolls out, looking to pass, he fires. Incomplete. Gavin Gallo, the intended receiver on that one. Good pressure by the defense. It was Carter. I was just following him that play to see where the ball was going and sneak in a pass play. Martinez. Hands this one off to Nas Lewis. See Carter get his hands on one after all this blocking. Hand it off to Wow Prince Borte. Borte looked really nice on that one. Again, vision and movement. That goes back to our, the running backs, coaches also. And we got whistles. And a timeout for Bridgeton with 4.49 remaining. Clear view up next. And during this timeout, once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors. The Greenview Inn at Eastland Golf Course, Reconstructive Orthopedics, Newfield National Bank, Van Dodge, Allen Associates, Technic Consulting, Medio Law Firm, Barufi Brothers, GNS Dry Cleaning, the Vineland Education Association, Dr. Michael Gorson, General and Cosmetic Dentistry, the Claridge Radisson Hotel, the Gorgo Group, Larry's Two Restaurant and Catering, Bettino Shoprite. Carluzzo and Teresi Petroleum Transporter, Homestead Plumbing, Richland Carpet, Manny and Vic's Pizza, Sir Speedy, and the Sweet Tooth. Thank you all for sponsoring the Vine and Fighting Clan and helping with this broadcast. Martinez. Hands this one off to Borte. He's looking to get in on the running back room action, and he does. Prince Borte, he's got a flag. It's again 
against Vineland. That's going to happen when you're up by a lot. You know, there was quite a few years I was calling these games and we were on the other side of this and a lot of running clocks against us. And you'd see somebody get in and they'd take it back a little bit. But this one, I believe, is post play, a dead ball foul. So the points will stay, I believe, yes. And we'll kick an extra point here. So Borte's five-yard run stands. His first touchdown of the season. And Greif nails the extra point. So with 4.37 to go here in the fourth quarter, Vineland now has a 47-0 lead. Makes it a little more exciting to start looking at film on clear view and seeing what the matchup's going to look. I also like looking back through. You know, it's so different as a commentator or a fan. You're like, oh, great job by the offensive line. But when you're watching film in any sport, it's not about what you did good. You, you already know you did that good. You pick apart where was your first step? Where did you turn? Which guy should you have switched off to? You know, and you can pick up all the little things that weren't perfect to make it better. And as well as they've played, you know, even talking last week about I thought the offensive line was pretty good. And talking to the coaches, it's like, yeah, hey, we watch film, though. And I'm like, yeah. And I think it's a point to be made because during the game, you can't really tell if somebody went the wrong way, had a bad play, kind of sulked and took a play off or didn't hustle to where they needed to be or made the wrong read and you get in the film, and every time you get something on film, you're able to improve and get better from it. And Violence worked in a new quarterback, different rotation on the line a little bit, different running backs getting the ball, you know, a lot of new faces, and I, that only helps to have that film to be able to clear it up. Greif sends this one away. It'll be returned. And Bridgeton will set up shop at around the 38, maybe the 39 yard line. And another special teams open field tackle. This time, Caden Barnes, the junior at 5'8, 165. bring up the, the film sessions and being able to see all these different guys on film, it reminds me of a uh, head coach in the Premier Lacrosse League that I get to talk to every single week of the Chaos Lacrosse Club, Andy Towers. He's very big on getting the evaluation of every single guy that's on their roster at some point throughout the season and having film and having, you know, things to look at for those guys so that way, you know, when matchups come around or, you know, you think somebody matches up well against another team, another defenseman, another offensive player, he's got that film in his back pocket to go back and look at and utilize, and I think that's a huge advantage in any t level of sport. And for Coach Guzman and this staff to have that tonight, you know, with the performance that they've had, to have multiple running backs now have film, to have the way the offensive line is played, to now have film for both quarterbacks to use it's only an advantage for this staff. Yeah, and, and in a team sport, it's so important. But even back when I was coaching wrestling, everybody had a camera back then, and a parent would go film two matches for me. And then I'd have film, so I'll start pulling kids out with 40 minutes left in practice. You five, one at a time, will come in, and we'd scout film and watch film. So not just to make yourself better, but to see what you're going against. That play is blown up. Pritchett trying to get it on a hop. He does, but the violent defense just swarms all over it. And Carter in there at the end of it, but he had a lot of help with 240 to go. Swarmed around like our little wasp friend that we've had up here the last two weeks. Yeah, he left me alone today. All it took was to move. We were in the middle window, and that's like home base. Over here on the end, as long as I don't leave any snacks out, we're going to be all right. That's what we're going to try next week. Give a shout out to the food trucks. See what they can do for us at halftime. I learned I learned from Whitey back in the day, <laughs> Richie Ashburn. Ah, tell you what. <laughs> Crux done a master class job of that this yeah. year. 
So third and long. Third and about 17, two minutes. High snap, handed off. Belly play doesn't fool the violent defense. St. Jean at the bottom of that. Five nine two twenty five, kind of like able to fit in the spaces, but strong enough and short enough that he can plant and just hold his ground. So Pritchett to punt it away again. One fifteen. That's oh, over man. his head. So that's twice on punt plays. Violence got a safety, and now they're going to get the ball. At about the one. We're talking about morning radio and give them an opportunity to bend the knee here. So Vineland's got them pinned back with a 47-0 lead. One side says he's in, the other side says he's not. And if I had to bet, I'm gonna bet that they're gonna say he wasn't. Well, that's going to do it. Clock runs to zero, and the fighting clan are on the board in the win column here in 2023. A dominant performance in all three phases. Coach Jose Guzman, oh, they do change the scoreboard. <laughs> I'll that. It's reading 53-0. Uh, so we'll, get, we'll try to get the official, official score uh, as soon as we can. But as of right now, Coach Jose Guzman and his staff now at one and one and get that first win in dominant fashion, 53 to zero over county rival Bridgeton. A phenomenal performance on the offense from all the running backs. Great job by Jacob Martinez in his first start at the varsity level. The defense, stellar pitch a shutout here, getting turnovers, creating havoc all across the board. A big shout out to Marcelino Ojeda and that special teams unit getting the safety, creating pressure on punts. Just a job well done and a master class performance by the fighting clan here tonight at Catone Stadium, Rich. Hey, but don't forget about the defense. Pitching a shutout, holding the opponent to no first downs in the first half, I think two for the game. Just an outstanding job defensively, as well as everything you've mentioned. Just a complete win for the fighting clan. But today... It was the running backs. I mean, what they did after the offensive line gave them their five yards, what they did in that open space was some beautiful runs, runs you don't get to see all the time, and just a great job. So hats off to everybody there. As we get ready for Clearview, be a little bit of a tougher challenge when we get to Clearview, but we got time to get ready for that as Vinan looks to go 2-1 and one with their third home game in a row. Be sure to come out to the Double Eagle Saturday night to take in Guzman's Gridiron live with a potential special guest in the building as well. We'll recap everything that happened here in this 53-0 win. Coach Guzman's first win as a head coach, and we'll get set for Clearview as well. But for Rich Scarpa, our entire production team, Doug Diola, hitting the ones and twos and making this magic happen. I'm Kyle Bennett. Your final score, 53-0 in favor of the Fighting Clan here at Catone Stadium. Everybody have a safe and happy Labor Day weekend, and we will see you back here next week as the Fighting Clan hosts Clearview, looking to go 2-1. and one.